Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Hey everyone, Money G here, and for you new subscribers to my channel, I want to tell you that sometimes when I have my most anticipated films come out that are not horror movies, I actually do these videos that I call my thoughts on videos. And one of my most anticipating films that came out this year is Bad Boys for Life. Yes, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith are back once again as, you know, the Bad Boys films. And uh, this is my thoughts on that movie. <laughs> Now, Bad Boys for Life is a 2020 action comedy film. It was directed by, I hope I get these names right, Adi El Abri and Brilla Fala. Oh boy, I know I screwed those up. This was written by Chris Spinner, Peter Craig, and Joe Callahan. Uh, obviously, this stars Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, Paula Nunez, and Joe Palantino. This is the third film of the Bad Boys series. Uh, it took almost 25 years before we finally got this one. I mean, wow, what's going on? It took them this long? Well, they actually had something for the third film that was obviously going to be directed by Michael Bay, who directed the first two films. But unfortunately, you know, things happened. Bay decided to do some other projects. You know, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, they decided to do some other projects. But finally, they finally got together. Uh, Michael Bay is not directing this one. We have these two uh, Belgian directors here. And uh, let's see what I have to say for Bad Boys for Life and see if they still have it. Now, detectives Michael and Marcus have to confront new issues such as career changes and midlife crisis as they join the newly created elite team Ammo of the Miami Police Department as you try to take, take down Armando Armas, a vicious leader of a Miami drug cartel. That's basically what the plot is about. Now, the bad boys are back as Will Smith and Martin Lawrence after 25 years since the original film are back playing Miami detectives Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett. Uh, this time with the direction of Belgian film directors Arbery and Fala, no, not Michael Bay, we're finally getting the third film that was promised so long ago. Now, do they have the same chemistry? Is it still funny? You know, are we going to get action again? Are we get the same type of action that we saw in the first two films? Well, I'll be happy to say that I truly enjoy myself watching this very entertaining, funny, and sometimes very emotional film. Yes, indeed, the bad boys are back. Now, after a pretty and very funny opening scene of Bobby Marcus and the birth of his grandson, uh, we get to see the main villains of the movie. We have uh, Isabel Artis, who's, who was married to a head of a drug cartel along with her son, Armando Amas, who is a world-trained assassin. They're going after the people they believe are responsible for the death of her husband, and not surprisingly, Mike Lowry is in their hit list and on their sights. <laughs> Now, after 17 years since we've seen them together in Bad Boys 2, both Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are actually still funny together, and they still have that great, great, great chemistry that we've seen them before. I mean, you'll have some nostalgia moments, some in the scenes, especially in the beginning of the movie. You know, their timing is still there. They might be a little older. You know, Martin Lawrence has put on some weight. You know, we see uh, what's been going on in their lives you know, like I said, Marcus, he's a uh, grandfather now. He wants to retire. Uh, Mike is in a little bit of a midlife crisis because he doesn't know what to do with his life yet. But the chemistry is still there, and that's one of the things I actually truly love and what I miss about seeing the bad boys. Now, something that wasn't in the first two films is the emotional bond that Mike and Marcus have with each other. Now, we know that they they truly love each other. They're more like brothers than they are partners. But in this one, but in this one, especially when something terrible happens to one of them, it really takes a toll on their friendship and tests their love for one another. Now, this is something we haven't seen, and both Will and Martin are excellent in expressing their feelings before. I mean, they really go after each other, and, and particularly in these scenes. Now, credit has to go to screenwriters Chris, Peter, and Joe, as they've done an excellent job in showing where these characters are in their lives right now, especially for the first time in his life. Mike needs to know what he wants to 
want he wants out of life other than chasing bad guys. He's you no, know, he's still single. He has no kids. You know, he seems to be jumping from girl to girl. Doesn't seem he wants to settle down. Now, while uh, there are some other characteristics in his film uh, that get explored here, especially his relationship with Rita and how he looks at her. And Marcus calls him a dumbass. And I thought those scenes were great. I also love Marcus and Mike's interaction with Rita, like I said before, who was uh, his former lover of Mike's, and her squad, Ammo, which is called Advanced Miami Metro Operations. <laughs> now, you can tell that Mike still harbors some feeling from Rita, which is why they clash while investigating Armando's assassinations. Uh, while it was nice seeing, also seeing Vanessa Hudson actually playing a badass Kelly, I guess she's trying to improve her image instead of the good girl that we saw in the, those musical high school musical uh, things from Disney. And we have Charles Melton who actually plays Reggie on Riverdale as Rafe. He's sort of a young badass millennial. But it was Alexander Ludwig as the big gentle tech giant dorm who I like the best out of this group. They have great chemistry together and you can see the contrasting of styles as opposed to when Mike wants to do it old school way and um, Charles Melton's character wants to do it the millennial way, if you want to call it that. But they're, even though they clash, they still want to get the bad guy. And I really and truly enjoyed those scenes that they have with these group from Ammo. Now, Mexican actress Kate De La Castro is excellent as the vengeful Isabel Arturis. Artis, I think is how you pronounce her name. Uh, once we learn of her motivations on why she's after these people, we know that nothing will stop her because she's sort of a badass herself. Can't give Isabel the fire and the coldness that a woman such as Isabel is. I mean, she's cold, she's ruthless. Nothing's going to stop her to get that's going to get in her way. And it's one of the things I actually like in this in this movie because as opposed to the typical villains that we've seen in both these movies or any other action movies, I think it's the first time we actually have a villain that has an invested interest in doing the thing that she wants to do, not just the typical drug dealers, especially that we saw in the second one. I think that was one of the problems I didn't like the second one because he was just a typical drug lord in the second one. No, Jacob Cipero, I think how you pronounce his name, is okay as Armando Armas. And now, he's your typical badass Latino, but you can see he was, his hatred was influenced by his mother. Uh, now, I do like the twist that we discover about him that explains some behavior we've seen from the person the secret involves. You can see the contrast of this particular person. Now, I won't reveal who that is, but if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. You can see why, once we learn about this guy's origins, where he comes from, and who he's related to, we can see why that happens, and uh, there's another one of those emotional scenes that we have in this particular film, which explains that particular person's behavior. Not just because Michael Bay isn't directing doesn't mean we don't get explosions, shit blowing up, and hot women wearing, <laughs> wearing little clothes. <laughs> Now, Ibri and Fala do a fine job in shooting these action scenes, especially in the third act. I mean, the opening scene lets us know what we're in store for when it comes to the chase scenes. And if we saw in the trailers, yeah, they use lots of wide angle shots without some of the quick edits that we've seen before in base films. They are filmed very smoothly so the audience can follow so we don't get lost like some of these other action movies that we've seen before. It's shot very well. So it reminds me of some of the action scene that we saw in Aquaman last year. Now, Arivi and Fala also do a good job with the pacing of the movie, where the audience doesn't get overloaded with action scene after action scene, or lose it when the audience needs to time out. Now, this is when those emotional scenes take place, especially when a tragedy happens. And the directors do a good job in these scenes, making the audience how making the audience feel how much we love Mike and Marcus because we love these guys. And uh, some of the scenes that happen between them and some of the stuff that happens to their friends, it's real sad moments right here. And that's the reason why we love these characters. And I thought the directors did a good job in keeping the pace, keeping the movie flowing without losing the audience. We're not bombarded with action scene after action scene. We have a nice nice uh nicely paced movie here so overall i have to say i'm glad that mike and marcus are back and based upon what happened at the end of this one and of course the box office which i heard they're killing it as usual we might be treated to a fourth film uh oh <laughs> now if i were to rank this series i would say this is the best one out of the three movies that we have so far 
Uh, like I said, some nice action scenes, some very emotional moments in the film, some good chemistry between you know, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. You know, it's good that the bad boys are back and they're here to stay. Now, of course, I want to let my uh, new subscribers know when I do these thoughts on movies, I do not uh, rank them or give out my code, my uh, bloody code points. Those are reserved for horror movies. So I don't rank them. I just tell you exactly what I felt about the movie. Just another basic review. I just don't rank them because those are reserved for horror movies, not for my thoughts uh, movies. But I highly recommend that you guys go see Bad Boys for Life because you're probably going to enjoy it just as much as I did. And so that's my video for the day. If you did like this video, please like and share. Uh, also, what you thought about Bad Boys for Life? Did you enjoy the movie? Are you glad to see Will Smith and Martin Lawrence back once again as Marcus and Mike? I'll leave your comments down in the comment section below and tell me what you thought about Bad Boys for Life. Now, once again, if you're new here, please hit that subscriber button and ring that notification bell. That way you'll be notified each and every time when I put up new videos like this one. Also, all my social media links will be down in the description box below as well. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, but thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you in my next video. I'm out.